In this video, we are going to go over making your own poker bot. For this, we'll be using the algorithm counterfactual regret minimization. Now, this algorithm is used in the 2015 paper by the University of Alberta, which solved uh, Limit Texas Hold'em, as well as Labratus, the program that beat professional poker players in No Limit Texas Hold'em. So what is counterfactual regret minimization? Well, let's like break it down by looking at each word individually. So the definition of counterfactual, expressing what has not happened but could happen under different conditions. So what this could mean is, in, in poker terms, you could say, if I had moved all in, what would have happened? I could have won $20. And the way we're going to be using it in the, in the algorithm, we'll be exploring other game states than the action that we took and finding out uh, what would have happened or the reward we would have gotten if we had explored those game states. Next we have regret. And regret is something that you have done that you wish you had not done it. Um, so an example for this in poker would be um, maybe you, you lost $20 because you played wrong or you folded when you should have raised and you could have made more money. Now how we'll be using it, we'll be looking at all the possible rewards that we could have received and then subtracting it by the reward we actually did receive. And this is how we're going to calculate regret. And finally, minimization. Well, this is the goal of the algorithm, and we want to minimize the regret we took. This would mean that we're taking the more optimal strategy. Okay, so to describe counterfactual regret minimization, we'll start by mastering the simple game of rock, paper, scissors. In this game, we have two players, and they each select either rock, paper, or scissors, with the winning player receiving one point for a win and a negative one point for a loss and zero for a tie. Okay, let's go over an example game. Let's say we play rock and our opponent plays rock as well. What will happen? We'll both receive a reward of zero. The next part of the algorithm, we have to calculate our counterfactual rewards. So what this is going to be, well, if we had have chosen scissors, we would have received a reward of negative one. And if we had have chosen paper, well, we would have received a reward of one. Next, what we're going to do is calculate our regrets. In order to do that, what we're going to do is uh, subtract our counterfactual rewards from our real rewards. As a reminder, our actual reward was zero. Our counterfactual rewards were for one for paper and negative one for scissors. So we see at the bottom we have a table that we're going to store all of our regrets. So rock is going to be zero minus zero, which is zero. 1 minus 0, 1, and negative 1 minus 0. So this is how we're going to calculate our regrets, and we're going to repeat this process over and over again. So let's look at another, uh, so let's run this again. This time we chose rock and our opponent chose paper. This is going to give us an actual reward of negative 1 and counterfactual rewards of 0 for paper and 1 for scissors. And then we um, calculate our regrets once again. Now you might notice these numbers are wrong. So let's look at scissors. Well, our counterfactual reward for scissors was one and our actual reward was negative one. So it should be one minus negative one, which should give us an answer of two, but it's one right there. And why is that? Well, we're summing all of our regrets on each iteration. So the previous one we had a, for scissors, we had a regret of negative one. Then we ran it again, we take two, and then add negative one to it, and that's gonna give us our one. So this is an important thing to remember is that we're storing all, our, all of our regrets on each iteration. And then what we're gonna do is run this process over and over and over again, until we land on a state like this. So these are our theoretical regrets that we're gonna get. So it could be 100 for rock, 50 for paper, 50 for scissors. 50 for scissors. So what's wrong with this? Well. As you can see, we've regretted not taking rock more than other ones. So how are we going to minimize these regrets? Well, what we're going to do is normalize these values or turn them into a percentage. So we add up all of our regrets and then we divide each of them by that number. And it's going to give us something like this. So 50% for rock, 25% for paper, 25% for scissors. 
Now, when we're making our decision or to in our next game, what we want to do is choose rock 50% of the time, paper 25, and scissors 25 as well. By choosing rock more than any other ones, what we're going to do is minimize the regret we're going to feel. And that is how counterfactual regret minimization works. Okay, and the last thing we're going to cover is Nash Equilibrium. And it's basically when a computer finds an optimal strategy. And we're going to be using, in order to find this optimal strategy, what we're going to do is train two CFR algorithms to play against each other until they find that best strategy. And for a game like Rock, Paper, Scissors, it's going to take maybe, I think it's 10,000 iterations to do that. And if you're wondering what the optimal strategy for Rock, Paper, Scissors is, it's randomly one-third choose between Rock, Paper, Scissors. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for now. Uh, let's jump into the code. Okay, so here's our Rock, Paper, Scissors solver using counterfactual regret minimization. And let's just go through some of the variables. So this action utility, uh, we're going to use that for giving it a reward. So um, so each row is going to be the, the user, and then the column is going to be the opponent. So Rock versus Rock will give a reward of zero. Rock versus Paper will give a reward of negative one, and so on. We have our regret sum. Remember, when we, we're going to calculate regret, it's stored in this variable. It's just going to be a vector with one row for each uh, action we have. And we're going to do the same thing for our opponent. Now, in order to get the strategy that we're going to be using, uh, we take this regret sum, we sum it all up for our normalizing, and divide each of them by that number. And this is going to kind of give us a percentage. So 50% rock, for example, or whatever. So in order to get the action, the one we're actually going to choose when we're at our iteration, we're going to take a list of all the actions we have and give it the probability of the strategy we want to use. And this is going to give us uh, the index of the action we want to take. And in order to find the reward, well, we're just going to go up to this action utility here, send in the action you took, and then the opponent's action, and it's going to give us reward. OK, so let's go over the training loop. Each iteration, we get our strategy. Um, we're going to kind of sum up our strategy. This is going to help us find our, our final strategy that we will be using. This. Um, OK, so we take the strategy, and then we're going to get an action we want to take. We take our action and our opponent's action, and we're going to get a reward. And then what we're going to do is calculate our counterfactual reward, which is right here. So we're going to loop through all the other actions, action A, uh, get the reward there, and then we subtract it by the reward we actually got, and this is going to give us our regret. We do the same thing with the opponent, and then we sum up the regret at the end. And then we're going to do this, run this loop about a thousand times, and it should give us, there we go. Uh, it's about 33, one third probability for each one. Now, if we ran this to its infinity, we would obviously converge at the Nash equilibrium, which is uh, one third probability for each option. But So that's the basis of the algorithm, very simple. And next video, we're going to go over uh, this algorithm, but apply it to poker.